Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So if you've looked on YouTube, you'll see there are many, many videos espousing the benefits of saunas and steam rooms. Unfortunately, nearly all of these videos use the same study material, which is around three to four years old. They just rehash the data and add different clips of copyright free uh, video or copyright free pictures. I think to date Thomas DeLauer has done about eight different videos on exactly the same topic, talking about much the same uh, data. So I thought I'd take a slightly different tack. I would try to emulate some of the tests that were done on the Norwegian study that's often cited. Um, that's enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and let's see what happened during my 30 day sauna challenge. So why did I do this mini experiment? Well, Rhonda Patrick, one of the very few people in the longevity space whose opinion I trust, has lectured a number of times highlighting the positive effects of heat stress on the body. Indeed, David Sinclair also mentions how low-level molecular stress is an aid to longevity. Rhonda Patrick often references a Finnish study that took place over 20 years and looked at more than 2,300 men aged between 42 and 50. And that study concluded the cardiovascular disease was 27% lower in men that used the sauna between two and three times a week. It was 50% lower in men that used the sauna four to seven times a week. Men that used the sauna two or three times a week had a 24% reduction in all cause mortality. Now the average temperature of the saunas in the study was 79 degrees centigrade, which is 174 Fahrenheit, and they used water on the rocks to increase the humidity during that time. And talking about time, the time was up to and exceeding 20 minutes. Rhonda Patrick also explains that a moderate sauna can increase the heartbeat to 100 beats per minute. An intense sauna can push that up to 150 beats per minute. Let's look at my numbers for the experiment. The aerobic zone is between 70 and 80% of your maximum heart rate. And the anaerobic zone is between 80 and 90% of your maximum heart rate. To calculate your maximum heart rate, take away your age from 220. My max heart rate for this experiment was 164. So my aerobic zone would be anywhere between 114 and 131 beats per minute, and my anaerobic zone would, between, would be between 131 and 147 beats per minute. So how can the sauna aid in longevity? Heat stress activates genes that produce more heat shock proteins. Heat shock proteins ensure that all proteins in our cells keep their three-dimensional structure. Misfolded proteins cannot function correctly. Unfolded proteins can lead to protein aggregation, which is found in cardiac diseases such as heart failure and cardiomyopathy, as well as in Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and Huntington's disease. A genotype which is associated with increased production of heat shock proteins is also associated with increased likelihood of becoming a centenarian. Now, whilst the longevity claims would be hard for me to measure, I did manage to measure my heart rate over the course of this experiment. So let's look at exactly what I did during my sauna experiment. Right, let's look at the protocol I used. Uh, if it was a training day, I would turn up at the gym, switch on the sauna, train for 30, 40 minutes, and then do the experiment. If it was a non-training day, I would call ahead, ask the staff to switch it on. I would turn up about half an hour, 40 minutes later, and then I would do the test. So I would stand outside the sauna. I would record the temperature because the, the temperature gauge was outside. Uh, I would record my heart rate on my fitness tracker, and then I would step inside. Once I was inside, I would switch on the timer for 20 minutes. I'll try to remember to take a picture. I sat on the top shelf directly above the heating element of the rocks, uh, and after five minutes of um, acclimatization or acclimation, as Americans say, I would pour two big scoops of water and throw them on the rocks. And that was quite an intense experience. At the 15 minute point, so 10 minutes later, I would then pour two more scoops of water onto the rocks um, to humidify the room. At the 20 minute point, I would stand up and I would record my heart rate again. Then I would step outside and then I would record the temperature inside the sauna once I'd stepped outside and I could see the monitor. Right, let's get into the stats feel free to pause the video and check these numbers in detail. Um, you can see here that I recorded my heart rate before I got into the sauna. 
the temperature before I got in is centigrade and Fahrenheit, the time I spent in the sauna, which was always 20 minutes, the temperature in centigrade and Fahrenheit after I got out, and my heart rate after I got out. And then I also recorded the percentage change in my heart rate from going in to going out. You can see here in the first five days that my heart rate on average before I went in was 104, and when I got out, it had gone up to 131. That's a 25.89% increase in the one hour and 40 minutes I spent in the sauna during those first five days. That had me in my aerobic zone for most of the time. You can see that these numbers here are in green. Um, but my anaerobic zone, which is between 131 and 147 beats a minute, you can see that I went into that for two days of that first five days. Um, I noticed I normally check my sleep stats as I walk downstairs in the morning and I noticed that my deep sleep was being severely affected. So I started to record it after about day five. You can see my, my overall sleep, seven hours, 14 is normal. I normally get between 20 and 40% sleep and that's gone all the way down to 2%. So there'll be more on that as we go through. Um, you can pause the video and read through these comments I make in the remarks column, but the general um, overview of that is that I made a big mistake by having the sauna up around 100 degrees um, having not used it for a long time because of COVID and then jumping in and doing 20 minutes straight off and using hot, uh, water on the coals twice as well. I would really reconsider doing that if I was starting this experiment from scratch again. Um, the other thing is although I didn't leave the sauna in the first 20 minutes because of the shock to my system i really did want to get out more than once um, but i managed to struggle through so that's it for week one moving on to week two you can see here in week two my average heart rate was 93.6 to begin with and that went up to 130.2 uh, when i stepped out that's an increase of 39 percent for the one hour 40 minutes that i was in the sauna you can see the majority of the time i was in my uh, aerobic zone and for two days there i was in my anaerobic zone um, now I couldn't train every day for 30 days and use the sauna afterwards so what I did was um, I would write in this column whether or not I'd taken a sauna the day before and you can see on this day where I had my percentage of deep sleep had gone all the way down to 14 but the rest were okay. Uh, again you can read these comments in your own time if you want to pause the video but generally the second week becoming slightly more accustomed to the heat but the last three to five minutes, especially after I put that um, scoop, the, the second two scoops of water on, was extremely uncomfortable. So uh, that's it for week two. Right, let's move on to week three. You can see here in week three that my average heart rate before the sauna was 96.6. My average heart rate after was 128.4. That's an increase of 35.39 for the one hour and 40 minutes I was in there. So the majority of the time as before I was in my aerobic zone but twice I went into anaerobic. Um, you can see that there are three days here and two especially where the heart, my heartbeat is quite low. That's because those are possibly days I didn't train uh, and turned up the gym having either driven or taken a slow bike ride. But you can see on those days where my heart rate was low to begin with I still got into my um, anaerobic zone or well into my aerobic zone. So that's quite good. You can also notice my sleep scores here are 24 and 19 uh, percent of my sleep was deep for two days when I had used the sauna the day before. So maybe my body is becoming uh, more accustomed to that. You can also pause these and check these uh, statements out. These again are much the same. I'm becoming more accustomed to the heat. It's not as painful uh, an experience as it was, especially in the first week. Um, but the last three minutes after I poured the second pile of water on, it's still extremely uncomfortable. So that's it for week three. Right, let's move on to week four. You can see here low heart rate to begin with, which meant with uh, that ended up with an average of 90.4 to begin with. Heart rate after 127.6. That's an increase of 45.52. That's the largest increase to date for the one hour and 40 minutes that I was actually in the sauna. You can see at the beginning of the week, after this one, my deep sleep was 18%, which is it's getting better than it was. It was all the way down to two to begin with, um, but it's slowly creeping up. But you can see here where I had taken a sauna the day before, I'm back up to 31% uh, deep sleep. So that's that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. You can look here at the, co the comments. And again, as normal, 
I'm fairly happy now we're going into the sauna. No issues up until about the 17 or 18 minute point after I put the second dousing of water on that it does become extremely, extremely uncomfortable. So that's it for week four. Right, let's take a look at week five. You can see here that the starting average heart rate was 97.8 and my heart rate after work was 129. That is a percentage increase overall of 33.2. Uh, you can see the majority of the time here I spent in my aerobic zone and two days in anaerobic. Uh, it's, it seems to be that if I start with my heart rate at 100 or above, I can always get into the anaerobic zone. And that seems to be um, what's happened in previous weeks as well. Scores, so I've got 90% there, which is not ideal. I like to be over 20%. And I've got a second one here, which is at... Um, 21% so the sleep scores slightly improving you can look at the comments here again if you want um, but as before I'm pretty happy now getting into the sauna at any temperature you can see here that some of the temperatures before uh, 222 degrees Fahrenheit doesn't really bother me after the first douse in the water it's not that bad after the second douse in the water when I've been in there 15 minutes at this temperature um, because when I come out it's it's like 239 240 um, that last two or three minutes really is torture so that's it for for week five right let's take a look at the last five days or week six you can see here that my starting heart rate was an average of 99.8 and my finishing heart rate was an average of 129.4 so that's a 30.85 percent increase in my heart rate just sitting down which is great uh, you can see that for three days i was in my aerobic zone and two days I was in my anaerobic zone and just to prove me wrong those two days when I went into anaerobic I actually started with my heart rate less than 100. I can explain this day because the temperature before going in was 244 degrees so it was extremely hot um, but this day it was only 98 which is 208 so that's strange. Uh, two good nights sleep 25% deep there and I'd been in the sauna the day before and 29% there and I've been in the sauna the day before, so that's great. Uh, unfortunately, on this day, I don't know what happened because my fitness strap was charging overnight. Uh, again, you can look at all of these comments here, but it's much the same. Easy peasy up to about the last um, three or four minutes, and then it's really, really uncomfortable. So that's it for week six. So I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Interesting that regardless of my heart rate before I go into the sauna, I'm always up into my aerobic or anaerobic zone and I'm and the increase has always been over 30% which is which is excellent. If you watch the the YouTube gurus um, they say that you need to be in that zone for a period of time to get any benefit. If you think as long as I'm in the sauna for 15 to 20 minutes a day and I'm in my aerobic zone then every four days I'm doing the equivalent of an hour's worth of aerobics. Um, add that to the physical exercise I do in the gym before or to the cycle rides that I do once or twice a week then it's got to be adding to the overall benefit so I I have started already using the sauna every time I go to the gym and as you know I've gone from two to three exercise periods a week to now three to four periods a week so I'll be in the gym at least once or twice a week maybe three times depending if it's too hot so I'll also be using the sauna um, that's it for this particular experiment. I'd be interested to see your comments and what you think. Um, the next experiment I'm going to run on myself is a blood sugar test against my current diet to see if anything that I'm taking at the moment does actually spike my insulin. I'd also be interested to see in the comments below if you think there's another kind of mini experiment I could conduct on myself as long as it's longevity um, based and it's not going to cause me any harm then I'll consider doing that as well. So that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching. Um, I hope to see you in the next video. As always, please take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.